The octet rule is a useful empirical guideline when we're laying down multiple bonds and lone pairs in Lewis structures, but it does have a number of important exceptions. So while the octet rule is based on the way covalent bonding works in many molecules containing nonmetals, there are exceptions, and the octet rule is one of these rules in chemistry that is made to be broken. So here we're going to look at three classes or types of exceptions to the octet rule and examples of molecules that fit into that that type. And the moral of the story here really is that you should not be surprised or confused or concerned when the octet rule is violated because there are good reasons to violate the rule in all of these cases. So the first type is odd electron molecules. If you count up the numbers of valence electrons in NO and CH3, you'll land on an odd number. And we haven't seen this yet. The number of total valence electrons in all the molecules we've looked at so far is even, and this tends to happen because electrons tend to come in pairs. However, in these molecules, because the total number of electrons is odd, there must be at least one unpaired electron in the structure. Molecules of this type containing one or more unpaired electrons are called radicals. So for example, if we look at the Lewis structures of NO and CH3, we'll see these single dots sitting on the nitrogen atom and the carbon atom, and these are the radical electron or unpaired electron. And if we count up the total number of electrons around each atom, we'll realize that that number is odd. For example, the total number of electrons around this nitrogen is 2, 4, 6, 7. And in fact, the same is true for the carbon in CH3 with three single bonds and the radical electron. So with seven total electrons around those atoms, they're violating the octet rule. Radicals tend to be unstable species, but they have been observed and they do certainly exist. And so we need to keep this in mind that having an odd number of total electrons while rare is okay and is valid. The second class here are electron deficient molecules. And these are molecules with still an even number of electrons total around each atom, but a number less than eight, typically six. So for example, in BF3 and in the CH3 plus cation, there are six total electrons around the central atom. This boron has two, four, six total electrons for the purposes of the octet rule. So it's violating the octet rule, only six electrons around that boron, but this is certainly a valid Lewis structure for BF3. And boron, group 13 elements in particular, have very good reasons for not satisfying the octet rule. To do so would require adding an additional bond or electron to that boron atom. And in that case, we'd have either an anionic boron with negative charge or a radical center. And that tends to be less stable than neutral boron with just six electrons total. And the last class, which in some ways is the largest, is hypervalent molecules. IF5 and SF6 are two examples. Here we have the iodine and the sulfur at the center and five and six fluorines surrounding that central atom, indicating that we've got more than eight electrons around the central atom. So 10 around the iodine and in fact 12 around the sulfur in SF6. And hypervalent molecules are more common than you might at first believe. Take, for example, the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid, which is another example of a molecule that violates the octet rule by having too many electrons, more than eight, at the central atom. The typical Lewis structure for sulfuric acid looks like this, and if we look at that central sulfur atom, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons around sulfur again. So these do come up particularly for elements in the third period of the periodic table in the P blocks, sulfur, phosphorus, halogens, heavy halogens, etc.